should have checked this before I started. All right, let's go again. Hello and welcome to Coral Summer and Osteris Stitches, episode number 29. My name is Monica, I'm the host. This is a knitting and crocheting and crafty kind of podcast. Um, thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. Um, if you're new, um, welcome. I hope you like it. Um, if you're a returning viewer, you will notice I am in a new space. Um, I did move house and that is why it has taken so long for me to put up a new episode. Um, so I am planning to get back to my regular every two weeks um, posting a podcast episode. Um, hopefully that won't be messed up by a little bit of a vacation that I'm taking later um, in the month, but um, yeah, um, hopefully I'll still be able to put out an episode, if not just a little vlog of um, the things I'm going to be doing on my vacation. So. Anyway, um, let's get into the knitting content. So as I said before, this is a knitting podcast. Um, I do primarily knit at the moment. Um, I do sometimes also do um, some s crafts um, like sewing and um, making stitch markers, um, which I have found finally in my move. I've found all of the ones that I've made up so far. Um, and I think I'm going to start putting those up on Etsy um, after I get them photographed in the new space. Um, so just a little um, idea if you can see through the plastic, sorry. Um, those um, and every set comes with a bonus um, bonus one. Um, it should be up on the little thing anyway, but yeah, so these are like some bronzy faceted beads. Um, all of them come on the light bulb stitch markers, um, that I find so useful when I'm, um, when I am knitting, um, because they fit on most needle sizes and you can also use them as, um, as actual, um, like progress keepers as well. Um, so there's that. That is what I do. Um, you can also find me, um, on social media. You can find me as um, Coralsome Rhino on Instagram. You can find me as Morux, M-O-R-U-X on Ravelry. Um, and you can find me at skeinofthought.com. I haven't posted a blog in quite a while, but I'm gonna try and get on that one today too. <laughs> um, but you, the last one I posted was about um, a humorous look at getting locked out of my house. So <laughs> um, if you uh, would like to um, definitely subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Um, and you can also catch all of the podcast notes over at my blog. I will um, post up a page for the for the um, podcast once I have it uploaded. So um, I will put the link in the description box below. Um, you can also subscribe. Um, it Yeah. Um, anyway, into the knitting content. I said that already, um, but I forgot. So. <laughs> I forgot there was extra stuff I needed to say. Anyway, um, so I have not had a lot of knitting time. As I said, I I moved house. But that being said, I do have two finished objects to share. The first one I'm going to share is a smaller finished object. This is a hat um, that is by... It is by... Jody of the Grocery Girls, um, she started designing hat patterns and I decided to try it out because I had a hat that I made and I shared it on the podcast so you can go back a couple of episodes. It's a sock head hat, but it didn't really fit my head very well. Um, every time I've made a sock head hat, I haven't enjoyed how it fits. So I don't think I'm going to be using the sock head hat pattern anymore. It just kind of falls off my head and I don't know if it's user error or if it's just because my head is a weird shape or I don't, I have no idea. It just doesn't like to sit on my head. So I ripped it out and um, re-knit it into this hat. And this hat is different because it's two strands of yarn held double. So it does look different. Um, there is also a pattern on it. Um, the colorways that I, I guess I'll just show you the, show you the finished hat. So here's the hat. 
So the colorways that I used for the main body and one of the strands for the ribbing is Muted Molly Weasley by Dragon Horde Yarn. Um, I absolutely love Tristan's colorways. Um, her yarn is really great. She has a color that I really want called Medusa, and there was another one that I saw yesterday on her Instagram feed that was absolutely gorgeous with like greens and like ruddy browns and oh. She has my number, obviously. Um, and the other color is th this green color that I mixed with Muted Molly Weasley is from Dingo Dye Works. It is the same green that I used in my old romance sweater. So yeah, I had a little bit left over, so I decided to use it. And I still have some left over, so I'm gonna put it in my, um, my blanket. I am working very slowly on a granny stripe blanket, but I chose a very small hook because um, I want a very dense fabric because um, I want it to be very warm because I live in Maine. I forgot to say that at the beginning of the podcast. I'm still coming to you from Bangor, Maine. I didn't move very far. I moved about two miles from my old house. I am in a much better location. I will talk a little bit about that at the end of the podcast. Um, so here is the hat on. Um, I did do an extra repeat of the pattern before decreasing for the crown. I just found that my gauge, I guess, was... I didn't do a gauge swatch, so my gauge was a little bit tighter, I think, than what Jody's was on on her sample, but I absolutely love this hat. It fits me so well. Um, there's no... it's not like what my other hats do, and I could, I could actually just display this, is this kind of weird thing and then they just fall off my head. So I don't know if that's the style of crown decreases that I did to make it like pucker up a little bit um, or just the, the size of the hat. Um, let me actually go grab and I'm back. <laughs> um, and my hair is ridiculous. So this hat that I made, I think it's about two years ago now, maybe a year and a half ago was using the sock head hat pattern with a uh, um, colorway or colorway color work section from a different hat um and this hat doesn't fit me very well like as you can see just kind of sits on top of my head there even if i roll it over i think that the crown part is just too tight or this part is just too tight. I think that's probably what it is. It's just, it's not enough stitches around. So it just kind of pulls upward like that. Anyway, I didn't like the fit of it. And this one I'm not going to pull out. This was my very first color work project. And I know a lot of people like to see the floats. So here, here are my floats. Um, so this was kind of my first color work project. Actually, I like the inside more than I like the outside. But, <laughs> but yeah, so so this is my last sock head, and I won't be making another one. Um, this, I don't know if you can actually see the patterning because of the, oh, there we go, um, because of the color, but it is pretty. But yeah, so this is two fingering weight strands held double. In the pattern, Jody says that you can use also a strand of mohair to make it that much more warm. I did not choose to do that because I don't have any mohair. Um, I should have looked up the name of the pattern before I started podcasting. So we're gonna do this on the fly because that's what I do. So, um, the pattern is called Mad's Hat, and it is uh, by Jody Brown. Um, she is Mrs. Brown's Bags, obviously, from, yes. Anyway, so if you just look up Mad's Hat, you should probably be able to find it. So that's my first finished object. My second finished object 
is quite a bit larger and I haven't blocked it yet. So it's not finished, 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 but I'm probably not going to get a chance to wear this again until it gets cold. So this is, whoop, this is the back. This is my weekender shawl, shawl, my weekender sweater um, by Andrea Maori. So it's a big box with sleeves. It's got some really interesting detail on the top, uh, one by one rib. Um, here, let me put it on. It's a little bit easier to see how it actually fits when it's on, obviously. So it's got this kind of wide, like boat neck sort of thing. Um, and it is quite big for me, um, but I live in Maine and I think this is gonna be the perfect sweater to sort of ro roam, roam about my winter days. Um, I can't believe that it is June and I'm already thinking about winter again. Um, here, let me, let me sort of stand up so you can kind of see. Yeah, so it's a little big for me. You can see this is my waist here. Um, so it's a little bit big for me, but I actually really enjoy the fit of it. I was a little concerned that it was going to be way too large. I also think blocking is going to, to help draw the yarn down a little bit because it is a very, very heavy sweater. So <clears throat> I am really happy with it. I, I improvised the sleeves because my gauge was very different than what Andrea had in the pattern. I think she has a tighter gauge than me. She knits tighter than I do. So I decided that instead of, instead of, cause I didn't realize it until I was at the underarms, which is quite a lot of knitting. It's about 18 inches of knitting before you get to the underarms. So I decided that I was going to just improvise the sleeves instead of, and just do a shorter amount of, of knitting instead of ripping it all back out because I didn't feel like that was a good option for the project. So I improvised the sleeves. I cast on a fewer number of stitches around the armhole. I did a different amount of decreases at a different rate. Um, and I kind of just decreased. So on the first sleeve, I kind of just decreased until I felt like I didn't need to decrease anymore. And then I kept trying it on. I tried it on almost every decrease row. And then, so I had stitch markers all along here. And then when I cast on the second one and I did a decrease, I would move the stitch marker to the decrease on here. So I knew I was doing the same amount of decreases. So I've done that. And I also like sort of used a different stitch marker. So there was a period of time where I was decreasing every four rounds. And then there was a period of time when I was decreasing every five rounds. So I used different stitch markers for the different um, rates of decrease. And I think that worked out really well for me. Um, so this is the Weekender pattern by Andrea Maori. Um, the yarn is Durerum Natura in Serrano. It is from, it is the yarn that I used for my Black Forest cardigan test knit that I ripped out because I had not worn it in an entire year I barely even looked at it that whole year and I just didn't like the way that it fit. This year has been so far the the rip it out and redo it year. Um, if I'm not happy with something, I'm going to rip it out and redo it because I want my knitting. It's not, it's, I'm not, I guess I'm not really, I can't really say if I'm a process or a product knitter. I want to be happy with the things that I spend my time doing. So I don't have a lot of knitting time. I have a 40 hour a week job. I spend most of my time with my dog who, I don't know if you can see him in the background. He's just kind of laying there. Um, I don't have a lot of knitting time. And when I do get knitting time, I want to spend it doing projects that I know I'm going to enjoy when they're done. So, um, that is why I haven't really done very many test knits since this Black Forest Cardigan, since the Black Forest Cardigan, um, since the Woods test knits. I haven't really done very many since then. And um, I can't see myself doing them anytime soon, to be honest. 
I think that I need to take a step back and and really decide whether I'm gonna go whether whether I'm gonna do test knits or whether I'm gonna finish the designs that I already have in progress. And I honestly would rather finish the designs because it has been about a year since I started two of my designs and I still haven't done anything. I've gotten one of them test tech tech edited and I still haven't finished the sample, so I think that will be my next, um, my next ca cast on, my next, um, finish, because I can't, I don't wanna, I don't want it to sit around and languish forever. So, I just gotta get my button gear, basically. <laughs> so, those are the two finished objects that I have. Um, I will be blocking that blue sweater probably today, actually. I finally found all of my blocking gear. Uh, and I've got the whole day off, so uh, I think I'll probably do that. The next thing, though, is a work in progress. So, I've shown this to you before, and I honestly can't remember where I was when I showed them to you, um, but they are a pair of socks that I'm doing two at a time. This is Frolicking Feet, which is... there's... I cannot rem remember the name of the company now. Uh, Dun Roving Yarns, there we go, in Frolicking Feet. This is the worsted weight and it is in the black currant colorway. Um, these are a pair of socks for my grandmother. I'm hopefully gonna finish these up by the 15th so that I can send them with her to Pennsylvania. And if I don't finish them by then, I'm going to see her the next, the following week. So hopefully I'll get them done by then. Um, not much to say about these. These are just plain vanilla, two at a time socks. I'm gonna do a two by two rib all the way up from after the heel turn, um, and then at the very top I'll do a little little section, like a like a four row section of one by one rib. Um, those seem to fit her the best, so that's that's what I'm doing. Um, these are on my circular. I have a circular set that I want to say is. Knitter's Pride, the Carbons, Knitter's Pride? I can't remember, the Carbons. Um, it's on a US 4 needle. And I am actually really enjoying the fabric that this is making. Um, I haven't tested gauge yet, but I really like it. So, um, or haven't measured gauge, tested gauge. I haven't measured my gauge on these needles, but I like the fabric that it's putting up. It is a very, uh, it's a pretty dense fabric, and this is a worsted weight yarn. So on a, on a US 4 needle, which is, ooh, I think it's a 3.5 millimeter. So that is one work in progress, and I only have one more work in progress to share. And this is what I've been spending the bulk of my knitting time on in the last couple of weeks because I needed something fairly mindless um, so that I could just distract myself from being stressed out about moving. So, um, I'm, of course, I am in the middle of a row, but it doesn't really matter because it's a big old circle. So, here is my next work in progress. It is a cowl. Um, it is a fingering weight brioche cowl, two color brioche. Um, I'm not following a pattern. I just decided I'm gonna cast on this many stitches. Um, so this is a US 7, which I believe is five millimeter? Don't quote me on that. Um, <laughs> it's either a 4.5 or a five millimeter needle. Um, so it's a pretty big needle. I'm getting a pretty loose fabric. Um, I so I cast on 200 stitches. I knit two rows of of stockinette, and then I started the brioche. And I'm just doing two color brioche for the whole thing. This is the leftovers from my old romance sweater and a mini that I got around Christmas time from an Instagram friend. So, um. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Obviously, it's pretty mindless. It is a... If you are a brioche knitter, it's really... Um, it's a really simple pattern. I'm not... I mean, I honestly have cast on 200 stitches. I'm doing 200 stitches of brioche, and that's it. I'm not really doing any shaping. 
Um, if anybody wants me to put it out as a free pattern, I will. It's really not that difficult. Um, it would be a good beginner to two color brioche knitting project. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna look pretty good. I may do a sort of split, um, I may stop here pretty soon and do like a split back and forth um, on either side, but I don't know. Just so that it would, um, so that it would fit underneath a coat because that's something that I have to think about in the frozen north. <laughs> so there is that. Those are all of my works in progress. Honestly, um, I have not been doing very much knitting. I mean, I guess this is a lot of knitting. I did just show you quite a bit of progress and quite a bit of, of finished objects, but it doesn't feel like a lot of knitting. And it's also been almost a month since I podcasted. It just doesn't feel like a lot of knitting, and I want to get back to knitting more. So, that is all of the knitting content. If that's all you are here for, thank you so much for watching. Um, I really do appreciate you coming to spend a little bit of your time with me. Um, I really enjoy producing these podcasts. Um, I've been doing it for about a year and a half now, and... I really enjoy it. It's, it's something that I can look forward to every two weeks. I can, oh look, I get to show this on the podcast or, or, or whatever. Um, and it, it just makes me happy. It makes me, it makes me enjoy, um, our community that much more. So again, thank you so much for, for watching. Um, and I'm actually going to talk a little bit about my move because I've alluded to it a little bit, uh, <laughs> a few times in this, uh, podcast. So, I was living in a small two-bedroom house with um, two of my very good friends and they um, they decided they wanted to move out and I can't afford the house by myself. Um, it was about three times. Obviously we were splitting rent three ways. I wasn't able to pay three times the amount of rent that I um, was already paying. So. Um, I had to find a new place to live, um, and I looked and looked and looked, and I couldn't really find anything, first of all, that I liked, or, um, or that I could afford, or every time I did find one that I liked, it was already rented by the time I went to go fill out an application. Um, it's very difficult to find, um, small one-bedroom or studio apartments j just for yourself, um, it was just, it was a very frustrating process. Um, but through friends of friends, I met a person who owns a big house and, um, has so, um, some kids and who are not with him all the time. Um, and so needed to have somebody to live with to help him pay the, the bills basically. Um, but needed to be very selective about who he rented to because of the girls that, that he, he has. So, um, so I, here I am. Um, I'm living in a really old house. Um, this area of Maine, this, the, in Bangor specifically, there are a lot of houses that were built in the 1900s that were like early, early 1900, like 1900 to 1910 or so. Um, that are big houses. Um, they're big old Victorian houses and a lot of them have been split up into smaller apartments because they just, the people who own them just can't afford to heat the whole thing in the winter um, without having tenants. So um, this house was built in 1900 and it's not split up into different family homes, like it's not split up into different apartments. And that is something that I found very intriguing um, about this house. I really love old Victorian style houses. I'm kind of a history nerd when it comes to Victorian England times. I'm not really as much of a big um, American Victorian times, because it's not Victorian times. Anyway. <laughs> um, but so this house is really gorgeous. Um, my room is about twice the size that it was in the old house. Um, my roommate really likes my dog. Um, 
yeah, so, so far it's been a really good experience moving into this place, settling in. I'm still sort of working on how I want to organize everything. Once I'm done with that, I may do a small video to show you, like, this is where I've put all of my yarn, like, this is my yarn stash and this is where all of my tools are, um, and all of my creative stuff, but I'm not quite done with that yet. I'm hopefully gonna start work on that today. I have had to work the entire time I've been moving. Um, I did move in last, like, on the 1st of June. And, um, yeah. The only downside I have found so far is that my dog broke out of his kennel twice and broke the door. So I, he doesn't have a kennel anymore. Except that what I did was I set up a webcam so that I could call myself and check on my dog while I'm at work. Um, and what I found is that all he does is sleep when I'm not home and his kennel was just making him more anxious. So I'm going to talk to the vet about that and see if that's a common occurrence, if it's, if it's common for dogs to change their behaviors as they age, obviously, obviously it is. I would assume like it's just like a human, like they grow out of certain phases. Um, but I want to know if she's ever heard of a dog being made more anxious by the kennel than um than it used to be anyway that's that's another story entirely so um yeah so we're settling in and i'm really happy it's really great and i think that's all i wanted to share so if you again if you want to follow me on social media i'm coral sobrito on instagram <laughs> excuse me um i'm coral sobrito on instagram morux m-o-r-u-x on ravelry you can find me at skateofthought.com and um, if you want to shoot me an email, it's quarrelsobrito at gmail.com. Um, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you again in two weeks. Bye!